Let's talk about the panic attack that I had this weekend. Hey, it's your boy Kai. Ooh, boy, do I have a story. Before we get started with my crazy story, do me a favor, hit that subscribe button, because on this channel, I'm always talking about mental health, including uh, my story being diagnosed with ADHD, severe depression, and high-functioning uh, anxiety, and I wanna hear your stories, and I wanna share as much knowledge and ins insight as I can. So if you're a big fan of that, if you want more information and just general talk about mental health so we can hopefully end this stigma, click that subscribe button. And if you want even more insight, go subscribe to my Patreon, where we go into even more detail about mental health and why it's important and, and all of the insight from experts all over the world. I want to share it with all of you. It's only on my Patreon. So let's talk about this panic attack that I had this weekend. As a lot of you may know, I live in Philadelphia, but my girlfriend lives up in New Hampshire. This weekend, I actually had the pleasure of going to a party with some of her closest friends. And this was... This was the second time I've been to a party with this group of friends, and I, I always do really have a great time, but it was a little weird, this, this go-around. I mean, it was weird last time, but I figured that it was only because it was my first time being amongst uh, those people at that party. Uh, but it happened again, this go-around, where I was having the same feelings and I started to get concerned, and the next thing you know, I, I was shaking, I was uh, panicking, I was sweating, and I just wasn't a good party guest. So while I was at this party, you know, a lot of things were, you know, kind of happening. You know, there was a lot of people there, a lot of conversations, and a lot of you may know already, I am one of the biggest introverts in the world. Like, when it comes to introversion, like, yeah, I will 100% be an extrovert when I have to. Like, I can be an extrovert at the snap of my fingers. I'll be an extrovert. I can schmooze. If I need to, I will schmooze, but sometimes uh, things can be a little bit too overwhelming for me. And there was a lot going on at this party and I thought that I could handle it. And I'll tell you why. I thought I could handle it because I have gone through so much practice in social situations with my anxiety. So I felt as if, okay, I'm gonna go to this party. I felt a little uh, over anxious last time, but uh, I, I think I have a handle on it now, so I, I know moving forward, I think I can kind of navigate this. Uh, so I get there, there was even more people than, than before, and a lot of them obviously, you know, wanted to have a conversation, understandably so. It is a social gathering, it is a party, and I wanted to get to know them too, and I, I really did try. And any of you that know me, I don't ever want to be like that guy in the corner that is just not talking. I am not a wallflower. Um, I do like to people watch, right? So if I'm like in the park or something like that, I will people watch. And I'll, I'm like one of those people that's gonna be sitting there looking at couples like out in the park or something or at a restaurant and trying to figure out what their relationship is with each other. Like, is it a first date? Have they been together for a while? Are they about to break up? Like that's what's going through my mind whenever I'm in that kind of situation. But when you're in a party situation where there's so much going on and people will actually approach you and have conversations, I usually do okay, but there was a lot more of that happening this go around, mainly because the first time I was there, um, you know, people didn't really know me, you know, I, I was meeting a lot of people, so they were just kind of getting a, getting a feel for me and I was getting a feel for them. But this go around, I, I had met a lot of them already. So like they, they knew me, a lot of them follow me on social media, specifically on TikTok and Instagram. And so, you know, they wanted to have a conversation, understandably so. And I honestly, I went into the converse, I went to that party thinking, okay, that's what's going to happen. I'm ready for it. I was not ready for it. I really wasn't. And I, it just kind of, it kind of uh, took me by surprise. And I didn't know what to do because the night started out fine. You know, I had some liquid courage, if I may. I had some Jameson whiskey with, uh, with ginger ale because that's my drink of choice, by the way. <laughs> that's why I love Jameson whiskey. Uh, so if any of you ever wanna send me alcohol, make sure it's whiskey. If it's Jameson, great. If it's just normal whiskey, great. <laughs> just let me know if you need my PO box and send me all the alcohol in the world. But with that being said, I, I had some liquid courage. I, I had some Jameson in me and I was like, okay, this should be fine. I've been in this situation before. I have some alcohol. I'll be fine. But then, you know, people started to come up to me and started talking fine. But then more and more people started to do it. And, the, and then that's when I started to get a little, a little weird. I'm like, okay, something's wrong in my brain. Something's feeling a little off. So I'm just going to kind of step, take a step back for a second. Next thing you know, um, I just started feeling incredibly overwhelmed. 
you know, especially as the night continues to progress forward. And I'm looking around, there's, you know, conversations happening over here and there's, you know, games happening over here and there's, you know, things happening all over the place. And I'm just like, everywhere I looked, I just felt, even though I wasn't the center of attention at all, I felt like I was. And I just started to, it started to shake. And, and, and um, Abby was next to me the entire time and, and she could tell something was wrong. And, and thank God she knows me better than most people. So she was able to understand what was going on. Now in certain situations like that, you know, I, because of the therapy that I've gone through and because of the work that I've put into my anxiety, I have certain things that I do when I'm, whenever I'm starting to feel anxious, right? So typically speaking, it all, like for me, it all, it always comes down to breathing, right? I always want to, if I'm ever feeling anxious, I'm always just like, whew, right? Like that's just how I handle my anxiety and it, and it works 90% of the time. Um, so I started taking my breaths and I realized, I started to panic more because I realized that my breath, my breath work wasn't working. And I was like, oh no, oh no, this is not good. And I don't know about you, but whenever I have a panic attack, I, and I can't control it, I, I start to panic and I, I just shut down. I shut down. And it was at that point that, you know, people were coming up to me having conversation and I, I, I honestly, I couldn't even look them in the eye, like at all. It was so weak, I, I don't like, it was just so overwhelming. I could not look at them in the eye. My, my, my answers to their questions were very short. And, and I started getting mad at myself for that. Like it just started to like snowball effect. Well, thank God, um, Abby, my girlfriend was there to kind of be like, hey, let's, let's, let's go, let's get out of here. But I, let me tell you something, this is where I started to beat myself up even more. Now this party was her friend's party. You know, I, I, these are all her friends, people that she loves and adores. And I was beating myself up because I'm like, man, I am taking her away from her party. I'm taking her away from her friends. And that was a lot for me to grasp because she doesn't get to see these people often. And I was legit on the ride home beating myself up. Um, thank goodness, you know, her and I had a great conversation that night, you know, kind of helping me process everything that was happening that night and helping me kind of you know, fully understand what was happening and why. And the reason that I'm telling you this story is because I think that, I, I know that I learned something from it and I think I wanna pass on to you what I've learned from this. So I feel very, very strong about how I handle my anxiety, right? For those of you that don't know, I was uh, diagnosed with high, fun uh, high functioning anxiety and severe depression in February of this year. And a couple weeks ago, <laughs> uh, or last month I should say, I was diagnosed with ADHD. So the mental health train for me, it just took off not too long ago. Like I just got on the train. I'm not even at my first stop yet, <laughs> right? So like it's still, a lot of this is still very, very new to me because I went 35 years of my life thinking that anxiety wasn't real, thinking that anxiety and depression was just a sign of weakness, right? That's just how I was taught growing up. And so to, to be in a situation now, it's, it's, it's all still very, very new to me, but I wanna pass along to you what, I've, what I learned in this situation. I learned this, even though I've been working so hard over the past couple of months to control my anxiety, to, to get myself to a point that I can function uh, in, in a good way, I guess, <laughs> you know, in, in social situations, um, even though I worked really hard, there's going to be times that no matter how much work you've put into it, you know, no matter how much uh, you feel like you've accomplished in your growth, there's still going to be times when you're going to feel like you've taken a step back. And I had to tell myself, I can't beat myself up. I've come so far in my journey. I can't beat myself up on nights like what happened this past weekend when I had my panic attack. And I wanted to beat myself up, but I, I stopped myself. And, and what was great is that the conversation that Abby and I had afterwards helped me process everything. It was very therapeutic for me. And now I know the next time I go to that party or the next time I go to a party, I know that how, how I can kind of handle it a little bit better. 
And I wanted to pass that information over to you because I know there's a lot of you that are watching, a lot of you that perhaps are diagnosed with uh, high functioning anxiety or severe depression, ADHD, whatever it may be. And you might have been in similar situations and not process, not been able to process. I want to let you know that the processing part worked for me very, very much so. It worked so much for me. It was kind of like uh, a release because I was able to understand what happened just by legit speaking out loud about it with somebody else that was there. Um, even, and even if Abby wasn't there, you know, just being able to, to speak out loud what I was feeling and what was happening around me and getting her insight helped a lot. So what I wanna pass over to you is this, if you ever feel like you've been in that situation before and you, need a way to process talk to somebody that you know you know talk to somebody that that loves you and cares for you um if you have access to a, a mental health professional in that moment contact them whatever it may be you may not be able to process it that night but like you should do it you know shortly thereafter um you shouldn't ever have to think that you have to process things alone i used to process things alone all the time and i i've learned to not do that i've learned to stop doing that and um, I don't want you to think that you have to process it alone either. Because if you're like me, I used to process it alone because I'm like, I don't want to put this burden on anybody else. I don't want anybody else to think that they, you know, that I'm their responsibility or that I have to have my hand held or something like that or that I'm not fully capable as an adult to understand my situation, my, my issues, whatever it may be. But once I've accepted the fact that People, there are people on my side and there are tools out there that can help me, that do help me. It's made a lot of this a lot easier for me and I know it can make things a lot easier for you. So thank you <laughs> for even now, just having this conversation with y'all right now about my panic attack. It's, it's been very, very helpful. So thank you for letting me get that out. Cause the, like even this talk right here, it's very therapeutic for me. So I hope you got something out of it, my friends. Uh, with that said, if you did enjoy this conversation, I do this all the time. Subscribe to my YouTube channel here. Cause I'm always posting videos, uh, not of, not only of me talking about mental health, uh, but I interview a lot of your favorite content creators about mental health as well. Uh, so make sure you go subscribe to my channel, click that subscribe button, hit that bell. That way you're notified whenever I post something. And on top of that, my friends, if you want even more information about mental health, where I go a little bit deeper and provide exclusive information about um, my mental health journey and some insights that I got from experts all around the world, uh, click, on, uh, click on the link that's in my description for my Patreon. Go visit my Patreon, subscribe. It's only $5 a month. And ultimately, I just want to help you live a good life full of good vibes because that's my goal. I might as well share that goal with all of you as well. So with that said, my friends, thank you so much for watching. As always, much love, good vibes. Bye. I'll see you.